going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today's vlog I'm going to talk about five common mistakes that expats often make when they move to Thailand. These are mistakes that can make the difference between having a nice comfortable life here in Thailand and complete disaster. Um, I understand that some people take advice differently like for example uh, my wife if I advise her about something um, she stop think about it see how it affects her and then she if she agrees with you she will never make the same mistake and then you have people like yours truly who if you tell them like careful the stove is hot the first thing I'm going to do is check it for myself and I've I am one of those people that actually life experience is the best tool to learn because if someone advise me on something I'll have in the back of my head thinking about it for some you know somehow but I'm still going to commit those mistakes and hopefully you're not like me hopefully what I'm about to share with you guys it kind of uh, get you to think and kind of at least realize and uh, hopefully save you some money hopefully save you some headache and you know you get to enjoy your life better here and um, so these are common mistakes that some of them I had to learn the hard way it's mistakes that I've made and I'll share my stories and some of them are things that I see happening to other friends and other expats living over here so right off the bat the number one the most common mistake that all expats make when they first move to thailand is to get involved to marry or be in a committed relationship with the first person that they meet at the bar um, often i i knew of a guy who came over here and he met this girl he, he within two months he was uh, talking about marrying this chick and that is a recipe for disaster I, I have plenty of my friends who been married to bar girls or who used to work as bar girls and they you know they have good good life they enjoy their life they love their spouse and but that in most cases are people who are they tend to be around the same age they are older they are they know each other for a long period of time the relationship developed from there wasn't something that just happened in a few months and i am one of those people that have that truly believe that a lot of these bar girls a lot of them are looking for someone to love them someone who they can love someone who's gonna help take care of them and grow old together but a lot of them are just there for the money and if you are coming over here and within a couple of months you get involved with a bar girl and you are thinking about marrying her try to think twice try to avoid that making that decision wait a little longer wait at least a year before you get too involved with a, someone that you just met at a bar because if you rush into it that's a recipe for disaster and the second one is to put up anchor too soon is like just come over here and decide it within a week or within a month of living here that you want to live in a place like Bangkok and you want to stay there and then you start putting up anchors like uh, you decide that you're gonna buy a condo or you decide that you get in a long um, rental agreement or you create your businesses in Bangkok um, I have a good friend of mine who came over here went to been coming to Thailand for a little while but always just come during the um, during the busy season he really really loved Chiang Mai and he went up there he bought a condo he started his business and as you guys know that six months out of the year Chiang Mai is absolutely beautiful especially around this time that it's a little that it rains and there's very little pollution but then when the farmers start uh, cutting their crops and they start burning and the place just becomes like you just cannot go outside because of all the pollution and, and all the um, all the bad air quality over there so 
He already put anchor over there. He already have his business, and now he have like he got a condo. So now he wants to move someplace else, like maybe Phuket or even Patia, and he cannot leave because he have so much uh, things that he got over there. And the same thing happened to me when I first moved here to Thailand. I moved to where my wife was staying because uh, she, we, we stayed in Prichin because she had a really good job over there. And like everything else, we thought that we were going to be there for a long period of time, even though we, none of us like that area because it's a, an industrial area. All you have is factories and farming. There's nothing like really nice. But we made the mistake of going and buy a house. And now that we move, just moved to Chamburi, which is much, much nicer city where you can find almost anything. And Patia is um, only uh, 35 minutes away. Uh, I can go to the beach within 15 minutes. Like this is an area that I really enjoy right now. And we are having a really hard time selling our house back in Prichin. So if you are someone that come over here and you pull up anchors too soon, you buy a house, you start your business, it becomes a lot more difficult for you to move and for you to go explore different areas when that time comes. Especially, my advice to you actually, is if you're gonna come here, live in different places if you can for around six months. Find the area that you really, really enjoy. And then explore the idea of starting a business or buying a house. See how that fits within your budget and within your life. And then make the decision from there. Another common mistake that expat often makes is to live here like you are on permanent vacation. Uh, if you are an expat, that means you kind of live here. Even if you're only here for six months out of the year, that means you live here. So um, don't act or don't behave like you are a tourist. Um, don't not have a plan for the day. Like, if I'm going someplace on vacation, I normally like to be loose, not having a plan, not having uh, a schedule, things that I need to do. If the day I want to wake up at 12 and sit by the pool or sit by the bar and drinking beers all day long, that is just fine with me. That's wonderful. That's how I enjoy my vacations to be. But if you are an expat, the, best advice that I can give you is to develop a little bit of a routine. Like for example, um, I play pokers with my friends on Fridays. So for the whole week, I'm looking forward to go play pokers with my friends, especially if it is a day in which I lost and then I'm looking, you know, to, to beat them up next time. I'm looking to make up my loss next time. Um, then there's like on Saturday, maybe I go get a massage. So I look forward to go get a massage. Uh, so have these things as a little bit of a schedule in which you're not just, you know, just going with the flow because it can end up being very difficult on you and you can end up um, becoming um, like boring or you find yourself doing the same stuff over and over again. Because if you just wake up and you go and you sit at the bar and then you repeat that and then you repeat that the day after and then it becomes just a little bit too boring that you're just going to want to stay at home. You're not going to want to do anything uh, because you just don't want to just to get up and go sit at the bar again. Um, but if you have like a routine that varies, I don't mean like have a strict schedule, but more like a routine that varies. Uh, so like this, you know, you don't have to be like a train conductor in which you need to be at certain place at a certain time, but just have it f flow and have you have something that you're going to do. Um, and that's gonna help you because in many ways, one, it keeps you from staying at home it keeps you from spending all nights at the bar and it also kind of saves you some money. And that brings me to the next step, which is uh, foreigners or expats who come over here, especially the retirees, they come here at a budget, they come here with a fixed income and then they end up not sticking to it.
It looks a little bit like Monopoly money. So that's roughly $3. And it's common for you to go to a restaurant and leave that as a tip in the States. Actually, $3 is the low end. But here in Thailand, for you to leave $3 as a tip, that seems to be a little bit too much. And I was one of those people who made that mistake when I first moved over here. Because I was thinking the conversion back stateside, like if I would go to a restaurant or if I would go to a bar, was not unusual for me to leave a thousand baht tip just because, um, I don't know, the girl was cute. You know, and that's 30 bucks. That's a lot of money here in Thailand. And if you are living here in a budget and you're living here on a fixed income, you have to be smart how you spend your money. And the last common mistake that I often see expats making is to think that they will never go back home. Especially in the beginning, when you have that sort of honeymoon phase that when anything and everything about Thailand is wonderful. Uh, this is a time in which people start making their mind that like, yeah, Thailand is going to be it for me. I'm going to live here and I'm going to die here. So there's no need for me to worry about work back home, about whatever certificate that I need to keep up. So like this, when I go back home, I need to, you know, go back to my job. Uh, they stop um, caring about families uh, and uh, friends back home. They lose contact with these people. Uh, they start burning bridges, uh, stop paying their bills, um, you know, uh, like they max out their credit cards and then just stop paying it. Why should I even care about my credit score if uh, in Thailand, if I'm going to live in Thailand? So, you know, no one cares about this credit card. Sorry, no one cares about the credit score here in Thailand. So why do you care about that? Why pay your credit card bills if you're going to just live in Thailand for the rest of your life? And then something happened in which is forced them to go back. Maybe there's a change in the immigration laws over here. or Maybe there's an issue with your health and you are forced to go back. And then you have to deal with that stuff over there. Um, so those... Uh, stuff in which you should try to be very very uh, careful if you have any issues uh, stateside uh, work those out before coming over here uh, so like this when you come over here you can just ease up and just get to experience the, the life here well guys that is going to be it for me i apologize for doing this on like well i guess this is my studio um because there's an increased number of cases of you know the situation you guys know what's happening over here uh they want people to stay home unless you have something important that you need to do. So I'm doing my part to stay safe, keep other people around me safe as well. Uh, so I have to do these vlogs in here for now. Um, but as soon we are allowed to just travel and go do things, I will make sure to take you guys along because I do want to explore the area where I live, this new area, because there's a lot to see. And um, well, that is it. So if you guys uh, enjoyed this vlog and I hope that this was informative at a minimum I give you guys something for you guys to think about uh, to see if this is happening to you if you're already living here to see uh, so you are aware of it if you are planning to come here so like this you don't make the same mistakes that I've made but if you are someone like me who have to touch the hot stove to learn for yourself at a minimum you are aware of that so like this you can minimize the consequences of that but if you did enjoy this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so uh, hit that bell icon so like this you notify whenever i upload a new video and i will see you guys on the next one peace